Reports of the alleged chemical attack have been wild and inconsistent. Some claim that over a thousand were dead, others claiming the number to be less than 400. U.S. officials have insisted the Assad government was to blame for the attacks. This is described as a red line that will justify U.S. military intervention. Damascus has invited the weapons inspection teams to the site for further investigation and says that it's the insurgents who are responsible for the attack. Farhan Haq, spokesperson for the Secretary General of the United Nations, says the inspections are in progress. However, as the inspection team set out to begin its work on Monday, it was fired upon by snipers. The first vehicle of the chemical weapons investigation team in Syria was deliberately shot at multiple times by unidentified snipers in the buffer zone area this morning. The team later returned to work in the area and visited two hospitals. It's not clear who exactly fired on the weapon inspector's convoy this morning. Russian officials have said that the reported chemical attack was a provocation. The possibility of a U.S.-backed chemical attack by the militants in Syria has already been evidenced. The British newspaper Daily Mail published a story on January 13th of this year entitled U.S.-backed plan to launch chemical weapons attack in Syria and blame it on Assad. The article quoted leaked emails from military defense contractors showing that the U.S. was planning a chemical attack in Syria which could be blamed on Assad in order to justify military intervention. The article was recently removed from the Daily Mail website with no retraction or stated reason. In May, a group of Syrian insurgents were arrested in Turkey. The Turkish government found that these rebels' forces possessed 4.5 pounds of sarin, the chemical weapon suspected to have been used in the recent alleged attack. Despite so many questions being asked, the U.S. government continues to insist that the Assad government is to blame. Sarah Flounders, co-director of the International Action Center, says she has seen the U.S. and the media lie in order to justify military action. This has been true of every U.S. war, from the first U.S. imperialist war, the Spanish-American War, Remember the Maine, and as the Hearst journalist said, uh, I'll send the story, you make the war. And this is still true today. But in my own lifetime, from the Vietnam War, based on what was called the Gulf of Tonkin incident, a total fraud. Sarah said the pattern of deception has continued. The corporate media in the U.S. gives all the headlines before the war and then later tiny, tiny retractions. The leaders of Russia, as well as other countries, warn that any foreign military intervention in Syria could have disastrous effects for the entire region. Already, over 100,000 people have died in the ongoing conflict. Caleb Maupin, Press TV, New York.